thank you for joining me today. So today I wanted to talk about something that I haven't really talked about in depth before and this is something I get asked questions about, well particularly the individual topics that I'm going to talk about in a moment here. Just keep in mind that I'm only speaking for myself, this is just my experience and my angle on things. I can't speak for other artists, although I'm sure a lot of them might agree with me, especially if you are participating in the world of social media, doing everything yourself, uh, which is a little bit different from the old paradigm of an art career in which case you would follow the trajectory of art galleries and museums and you would rely on those galleries to basically give you an income. Now that we have the internet, things are very, very different and it's really changed the art world. So I'm just speaking from my angle and my experience. So if you are an artist and if you agree or disagree with any of these things I'm going to talk about, let me know. I'd love to hear your input. One of the more annoying misconceptions that I get about art careers is that it's a very lazy type of career where you could just lounge all day and do nothing and, and make money, but that is not the case. People will especially assume this online and be super mean to you if they don't really like your work, if they don't resonate with it, if they aren't really that into art themselves. Like, they will just say the most stupid things about what you do. And that is complete bullshit because my work weeks are at minimum 70 or 80 hours and that's at the least. And I'm gonna break that down, what that time goes to in a moment, but it's just completely false because my situation is a little bit unique and other artists who are participating in social media and marketing themselves entirely, um, they don't have people helping them, they do everything themselves, then in that case, no, you're not just painting, there's a whole lot of work involved. So I would say the actual art making is only like 40 or 50% of my time, sometimes even less than that. On the other hand, if this is also your dream, you tend to have this very romanticized idea of what it would be like to be an artist full time and get to do what you love every single day. And this is something that I had in my own mind. I had this idea of what things would be like and oh my gosh, I would finally be happy and everything would just be perfect and there would not be a single worry in the world. That's not true. I mean, it is absolutely wonderful and I love it more than anything and I don't want this video to come across as complaining or negative. Not at all. This is just kind of addressing some of the realities of being a full-time artist that I want people to be aware of if they plan to follow a similar path to mine or if they're curious. That is not the case. You're not, your life isn't just going to magically transform once you become self-employed as an artist or doing anything creative. The difference is it's going to be a lot easier to do it because it's something you love but that doesn't necessarily make the work easy. When you don't have a boss, you have to be able to really discipline yourself and manage your time and have really good self-control. Any kind of issues, any kind of personal issues or character flaws you may have will certainly come out. The very beginning of it all, I was so overwhelmed because I was not expecting how much work it would truly be. So I think the best way to deal with that is to develop positive habits. Basically try your best to follow a daily routine and after doing it for a long time, it's gonna become more natural because it's become a habit. And when it's a habit, it's a lot easier to stick with it because you're just so used to it, it comes naturally to you. I, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be a full-time artist, I could just sit at home and paint all day, and sometimes that is what I do, but there is so much more involved with that, and like I said, the painting and drawing part, mostly painting, it really only takes up like 40% of my actual work hours. As you guys know, I am obviously on YouTube and I make videos, and people seem to think that it's very easy to make a time lapse. You just, you know, you film yourself painting and then you slap on a sped up effect and boom, there you go, there's your time lapse. I am very concerned with the quality of my time lapses and I have a very tedious, intricate process. Every split second of the footage I record gets processed manually by me. I cut out a lot of things like pointless moments where my hand leaves the canvas. So every split second I 
I process that manually. I'm in there. And that actually takes me a very, very long time. It takes like, it could take anywhere from six to 12 hours to process a single painting time lapse. It's a little bit different for drawings and watercolors because it's a much shorter process, but I actually uploaded a video of my entire editing process on my website, so if you guys are interested, you can watch that there. There, There's a lot that goes into it, and it takes me a very, very long time to actually film and edit, mostly edit the video. Um, and I also film these time lapses day by day throughout a set period of time. It could be a week, it could be months. It just depends on the painting and the complexity of the painting. So, you know, a single painting video is a very large time commitment. And I love doing it, but I am telling you, it is stressful as heck sometimes. So out of a week, I would just average about 20 hours into editing alone. That's like on the smaller side. Sometimes it's a lot more than that. So again, 20 hours out of my work week is just editing alone. Then we have to factor in my art store because I also sell originals and prints. So every single label I create, everything I print and chop myself, I create the prints myself. So as far as printmaking, shipping orders, and all that that's involved with that, let's give it another 15 hours. So 35 hours right there, which is technically considered a part-time job, 35 of my hours on average go to editing and shipping orders. If there is a new painting coming out that week, then we can factor in the color proofing process itself, which involves photographing the artwork. I take if it's a bigger painting, I take like 20 something images. It just depends on the piece. Um, I take a lot of individual photographs of the painting and then I piece it together in Photoshop um, and then I also and then I print several test runs and then I do different color corrections to make it match to the original painting as closely as possible and that can be a very timely process so that can sometimes take up a whole day so let's just say I do one of those a week but I don't do them every week but Let's just say in this week, I didn't do that. So we're not gonna add that time in there. The other side of my work, I take a lot of pictures of my art. I have to update my website. I have to keep track of my art store, keep track of inventory. I also have to manage my finances because taxes is a whole nother thing, which I'll talk about in a minute. So let's just give that another five hours a week. Mind you, I excluded the print color proofing process and the photographing of the art. Which you might think you just take a few pictures, but no, you actually have to like process those images because just raw files aren't good on their own. So that's 40 hours out of the week that goes just to the business side of things and that's excluding some tasks that I do. I'm giving you guys the minimum so it actually takes more time than this but we're just hypothetically speaking here if I you know average my time out this way. And then we have the actual painting process which takes up a lot of time. Oil paintings are a bit complex to create and there's a very intricate layering process. There's some waiting time for the paint to dry so a lot of times I'll focus on other things while I'm waiting for paint to dry. While some footage exports, actually there's a bunch of waiting time. I have an older computer. I'm trying to buy a newer one to be able to edit on two computers at the same time. I think that will really help me make things a lot faster but there's a lot of waiting time involved for stuff to process because if I don't the footage is going to get messed up. So let's just give myself a minimum of 40 hours to paint a week. Granted, I would do a lot more than that. So that right there is an 80 hour work week and only half of that time goes to painting itself. Sometimes it fluctuates. The time frames might fluctuate a bit because some days, some months I'll have less orders, some months I'll have more orders, some months I'll have faster paintings or it just it honestly all depends it varies but that's the average 50 40 percent of my time goes to the actual art making and the rest of it is all business then we go into taxes taxes oh how i love taxes that's really just my favorite part of the entire thing i just love it so much it's the best if you are not fluent in sarcasm, that was sarcasm. When you are self-employed, you have to keep track of your finances. You have to factor in every single penny you spend and what it went to. You have to save all of your receipts and 
just keep track of everything. I typically hire an accountant to do my taxes for me because I it's just a headache. I, this year and last year I actually did it myself which was absurd but I did. <laughs> Pat on the shoulder. But you know it, it is a huge headache. Every single receipt you've ever gotten you have to factor in you know what goes for business, what's for your living expenses, what's for food, what's business food, what's travel, everything. Like literally everything you have to add up and keep track of. So that is not fun. I hate it with a fiery passion, but it's worth it because I love what I do. <laughs> so I deal with that. That's that's literally the worst part for me. Oh, also health insurance. When you work for a company, a lot of times you get some kind of benefits including health insurance, which I don't get. The insurances I qualify for aren't the greatest and don't really cover that much in case anything happens. So all my dental work, pay out of pocket. If I get sick and I need to go to visit a doctor, I pay out of pocket. Another reality about being a self-employed artist is that this is not stable. There is no set guaranteed amount of money that you will make every single month. It fluctuates. I mean at this point I can almost guarantee myself like a range that I'm gonna fall into this range every month. So that's great, but there's no fixed amount. You don't have a salary. You know, it just depends on how that month goes. I'm not allowed to say exactly how much money I make on YouTube, but I will say YouTube CPM typically pays anywhere from like a dollar fifty from like a dollar to two dollars per thousand views. It's usually about a dollar fifty. So now moving away from all the business stuff, let's move on to the personal stuff. So I work a lot and I genuinely love what I do. I honestly prefer to sit at home and work instead of going out and getting drunk somewhere, which I don't like to do. I have this anxiety and fear of failure that just weighs over my head and I, it's probably irrational, but at the same time it's not because like I said, this is a very unstable thing. You have to be able to adapt and change and keep going constantly. You can't just disappear and that's something I have done in the past. I would disappear for like a month because I was so overwhelmed and stressed out. I would just burn out. But at this point, I'm, I've developed a much more stable routine, but because I work so much, like people get mad at me that I don't hang out with them because they think like, oh, well you make your own schedule, why can't you fit me into it? But like, they don't understand that I have no choice, like I have to do all these things. This is just a requirement. I can't not do it because everything will start to stagnate. Everything will suffer. It is a constant flow. You just can't afford to stop. So I, there, it's very rare for me to have a day where I don't do some form of work. Like I'm just working every day. And I do take vacations. Like it's rare, but I do take them. And sometimes I will take a day off. Um, some people will start to get mad at you because you're not devoting enough attention to them. And again, it just depends on those people. Like, some people are a lot more high maintenance and some people understand. They just understand it gets busy and that's wonderful, but there might be people that will eventually get pissed at you because you have stuff to do. Also, because I am living my dream and I'm very happy to do it and I love what I do and I'm usually just so happy to work. A lot of people will just assume that you sit on your ass all day and you don't do anything and they will also be bitter that you get to do this, that you get to do something you enjoy. Not only something you enjoy, but something that was expected to be a failure. Like, when you tell someone, I want to become a painter, I want to become an artist, people are a little bit, you know, doubtful of success being possible or even being able to survive off of it full time being possible. The people who will be negative are usually the ones who are miserable and unhappy themselves. Um, they don't know what they're doing with their lives. They don't know what direction they want to take. They haven't really taken the steps to get there. They haven't figured out what their goals and passions and dreams are or their purpose in life. And so when they see somebody living their purpose, they're going to get salty. And so I find that this mostly comes out in the form of insults that are disguised as jokes. So they're not going to directly go out and insult you and say something nasty to you. They're just going to disguise it in a sneaky way as a joke. Um, that's been my experience so far. As far as like real life and being in a social circle, I really don't like talking about what I do. 
I don't because it's usually met with a lot of ignorance and sometimes even disrespect and I'm just so tired of it. I just prefer not to talk about it. Um, I don't say stuff. I don't say, I don't talk about interesting opportunities, I don't talk about the art I'm making, I don't ever mention followers until someone else does, like, I just don't talk about any of that stuff, I hate it, like, I, I just don't. If I'm meeting someone for the first time and they ask, you know, what do you do, I will tell them I'm an artist, and blah blah blah, I don't know, it's weird, but I, I just don't want to talk to people about it, like, people who aren't involved in something similar. I don't want to talk about it, but when it is somebody who also does art and they're pursuing this, like I just love talking about it because they understand and we can exchange ideas and it's great, but other than that, I just, I avoid talking about what I do in uh, normal social circles. <laughs> oh, people will also want you to work for free for them, you know, like, oh my gosh, can you paint my dog? Oh my gosh, can you paint me? Oh my gosh, can you paint me something? Yeah, if you pay me. Oh, I have to pay you? Well, you know, it takes me like a minimum of 10 hours to complete a quality oil painting, so do you expect me to just dedicate all that time to you for free, or what? A lot of times it's people who are close to you, they kind of feel entitled for you to make stuff for them. Do you ask a doctor for a free appointment or a free procedure? No, you expect to pay someone if they spend time providing you a service that involves skills that you don't have. So yeah, it's just a matter of ignorance again. Ignorance that is sometimes unavoidable, but like you can't blame people, so. Sometimes people just don't understand how the creative process works or how an art career works and they'll just spew stuff at you and try to tell you how to do your job. Creativity and like your inner creative flow and your passion for it, it's a very delicate thing and people who don't do this on a regular basis just don't understand how exhausting it can be to use that energy, that passion you have for something that you don't really care about creating just for the sake of money or a response, you know? I really don't like when people tell me what to paint. That is one of my pet peeves. There's a lot of maintenance that goes into the creative process. I don't know, it's like a flame, it's like you have a candle and it's burning, there's a flame and the candle's gonna keep burning, burning, burning and it's gonna eventually get to the bottom and if you don't have another candle to keep that flame alive, it's gonna go out and it's gonna take a lot of work <laughs> to find a new lighter or something. I don't know where I was going with this analogy. I'm just trying to say that it's easy to burn out and overwork yourself, especially when you are focusing on creating art that you are not passionate about. And for a while, sometimes I get lost and I question like, am I painting this because I think it's gonna do well on YouTube or am I painting this because this is something I genuinely want to see existing in the world and something I'm really passionate about. And there was a point where I couldn't tell the difference and I didn't know. I guess it was both, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just trying to, to stick to things that I really am passionate about, things that come from the heart and making that kind of art because that tends to do better either way, so yeah. You just, you always have to stay inspired. You have to find a stable creative flow because you cannot afford to be an artist block. Even if I am an artist block, I still paint. Like I force myself to do it because I can't afford not to. Um, I can't afford to take time off from painting. That's just not what I'm in the business of. I paint for a living and all the business that I do outside of painting is involved from my paintings, so I can't afford to be an artist block anymore. I just, I have to paint all the time, so. So yeah, uh, those are just some of the realities that I have experienced as an artist. Again, this is just from my experience alone. I can't speak for other artists, but if you are a full-time artist and you're watching this, let me know what you think. If you relate to any of these or if you have an experience that you want to add to this, I would love to hear. I love talking to you guys. I hope this video didn't come across as negative because that's not at all what I intend it to be. That's not what I want it to come across as. It's just a matter of discussing things that are true to me. And again, I am absolutely head over heels in love with my work and with painting and doing what I do. So I'm not gonna stop, like no amount, no level of difficulty or 
curveball that I run into in life, which has happened, although I'm not going to talk about those things probably, but like it has been a really rough journey in certain times, but it's all worth it. I just love painting and making art so much and I'm going to do everything I can in my power to continue doing this for the rest of my life. I am very committed and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts or anything you want to add, I'd love to hear. So thank you so much for watching and listening to me rant. This has been very positive for me to get off my chest because these are just some thoughts I've had. But yeah, I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll see you next time. Bye!